All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the uh, what is this? The forty eighth episode of the Sparkcast. And joining me today is Spark Thomas. Hey guys, how you doing? Spark Thomas is, of course, his official title. His real name is, of course, just Tom. Or Spark Troll, as I'm also known as. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting uh, handle. Because you do troll every single time that Brian's on the stream. You just hope. I do, yeah. I don't. Brian, I don't think, usually ends up getting into chat um, when he's not on. But I try to make it on the in chat for when Brian gets on for the Sparkcast. Um, oh, oh, I just saw my video freeze. But but yeah, it's it's fun to go in there and talk to you, to you during the Sparkcast. Well, it's fun to talk at us is more what you'd really do. I, yeah, oh, it, oh. You troll. You troll. Back, I, troll. I troll a little bit, but it's okay. It's fun. <laughs> so last week, um, immediately following the stream, pretty much, uh, the next day, you had a bit of a different Thursday stream. What went on with that? Um. Oh, yeah. So the Thursday, so yeah. So for those who don't know, um, which I'm sure most of you do, Last Thursday, we released our leaderboards pack, um, which is super cool, and, you know, it's really exciting out there. You guys are making great creations that are incorporating leaderboards, and, and in interesting in ways, you know, um, it's definitely have raised, I think, the, the competitive nature or collaborative nature um, for creation, so super awesome. Um, what we what Moose is alluding to is in, in that stream, we did um, some giveaways giveaways like during the stream and 24 hours after that so we picked a couple creations that had by that point already incorporated leaderboards and made um, some giveaways with uh, spark premium and things like that so it was uh it was really fun i'm really hoping to you know that hear from you guys if uh you thought that went really well and like to see more leaderboard competitions i mean it's something new um that we haven't been able to do before um without you know having leaderboards but now that we can actually see those scores and have them come in, you know, that's something moving forward Brian and I would like to do more often. Yeah, I think um, one per week would be cool. Huh? I think one per week going forward would be cool. Oh, yeah, like put a community, like a, a game out there, pick a, a game, and then see who places the best. Sure. I mean, yeah. it was fun this week until uh, Punisher just crushed my score. Like, he saw <laughs> I beat his score, and then he was like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I triple his. Yeah, no, that's hilarious. So, I, you know, we always do, you know, we're usually running late to these things because we have a meeting um, prior to SparkCast. Um, but uh, it's our release meeting, and it's our release manager who is Punisher, and that's that's Charles. Um, Tell really him funny. I hate he, him. He, he, started, uh, <laughs> he started the meeting today by pulling up Retro Reborn and showing off his high score. <laughs> mm. So there you go. He's a, he's a very uh, competitive guy guy and a super really good gamer he used to have one of the highest um he still does have one of the highest gamer scores actually um not compared to like henry but um he is a, still an incredibly high gamer score and uh, well gamer scores don't mean anything as far as skill goes yeah no it's true well i mean he's just, it just it's to his benefit of showing how much of, of a player he is um you know and he like so he participated in that solitaire uh, Microsoft tournament that was going on. So, um, for those who don't know, uh, Microsoft was celebrating the 25th anniversary of Solitaire. Good and to know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I, let's, I think about it. You guys probably don't know that. Um, it's actually really funny. Uh, there's a skit that Jimmy Fallon did um, on it for this tournament that Microsoft was having, which, which is actually hilarious because this tournament was only open to Microsoft employees. Um, but it, you know, but it, like Jimmy Fallon picked it up and you know made it to like sound like this like huge global tournament, which it wasn't. It was like a bunch of Microsoft employees going on their lunch break to compete in solitaire. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, so Nerds. it was pretty funny. But he, he so Charles placed in fourth in that. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mascad brings yeah. up a good point. So it was uh, our um, release dates can get pushed back so that he has time to play Rush for Reborn. Right, yeah. No, we're 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 actually yeah. Every everything's gonna get pushed pushed out for a few months, so he can he can concentrate on increasing that retro reborn score. I think uh, I think that's the plan moving forward for sure. The next time I see Jared, I'm gonna have to go and talk to him about improvements that could be made to uh, retro reborn to make it a more <laughs> enjoyable experience. 
Well, now now that you've uh, yeah, now that you've gotten to the upper echelons of score, um, what, what score did you end up getting to? Like three or six million, something like that. Yeah, and then because it was, um, I believe it was S N D Acid Rain who got only like I don't know half a million below Less, yeah. Punisher. Yeah, I'd like Punisher a... score thirteen million something. Right. So. So the trick to uh, Retro Reborn is to lag the screen as much as possible so that your chip That's moves as slowly as possible. That's the exact same thing where he said like as it gets more and more stuff going on, it ends up like lagging, um, and it slows down like the movement, actually. So it makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and he, he said that after you reach that point, it becomes more about a marathon than it is about skill because it's pretty not bad to like stay alive. It's just about like how long do you want to go. Yeah, and also if you're computer crashes then it doesn't count mm. so I got a really high score one time and it just conked out on me and just went to desktop and I'm like huh maybe I should have closed all my background programs if I was going to play this but yeah. <laughs> so after that I was just like never mind my score is good enough I don't need to play this anymore and Jerry can do a better job making it more uh, enjoyable to play so mm. cool and so when I when I do this chat, by the way, I, I'm reading chat, so that's why I'm, you'll see my head go that way. I'm trying to digest what you guys are saying. Yeah. <laughs> Just FYI. What else was the next topic? I have it written down here. That's not what I wanted to show at all. I have too many windows open. Is the problem. I'm like a stickler about that, like myself, like when I'm using, you know, just a computer, like I can't have too many windows open. It's like overwhelming for me. Like same way, like when I have like a browser open, like my max number of tabs that I can deal with is like six or seven. And I'm like, oh, I, I have to be able to close some of these before I start opening more. Like I, when I see people and they have like 15 tabs across the screen, I like my, I just start like twinging. I usually have a few hundred, so. Yeah, there's no, there's no way I would want that or think it's probably, it's probably not that great for your right now I have four tabs of Chrome open and one uh, four pages of uh, windows of Chrome open and one Firefox and they each have about 60 tabs in them <laughs> well you don't look at them all simultaneously anyway so there are some issues uh, with the leaderboards levels have you been able to address that uh, so explain it real quick and then uh, explain how it's prog progressing yeah, um, so, uh, I mean, for the most part, leaderboards look like they've gone out smoothly. We are having a few um, things creep up with older levels. At least that's that's been our experience, is it's mostly older levels. Um, and I don't want to get, like, too technical about it. Um, but basically, with some levels, it looks like when they were for created, it would populate a leaderboard ID of zero, which is actually correct. But what happens is when a person goes to it, um, add leaderboards to the level, it keeps a, um, an ID of zero, and at that point, um, our, it doesn't know how to talk to our servers and communicate that there's a leaderboard. So for a few creators who've gotten in contact with us, um, you know, if you've added correctly leaderboards to your level, and sometimes that leaderboards tab will still stay grayed out. Um, like I know uh, Charlotte ran into this, um, and a few others came, K Hunter. So please uh, communicate those to us. Um, we're we're looking at ways to solve that, and of course, every every single case or instance of that helps us understand the problem better. Um, we want to make sure you know as many levels as we can get leaderboards on, and you know that's what we want. We want to see. Uh, so you know, take those to us. You know, send me or Brian a private message on the forums. This is probably the best way to get a hold of us, um, and we'll we'll take a look at the level and, and see what we can do. Um, so you guys yeah. can figure out what exactly the issue is, pinpoint it down, and then kill it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, we're we're thinking of solutions. We're not sure if it's going to be, you know, a small. If it's only going to affect like a very small user base, or if it's a much wider issue. Where you know, we've only had about three or four reports on it. Um, you know, or at least on like three or four worlds total, uh, which isn't a lot. Um, but obviously, right, they they could just not be getting reported. Um, so, uh, you know, bring those issues to us if you if you run into those. Especially, we think it's tied to like older, you know, beta levels. 
Um, we have seen it, though, in one creation that was actually as recent as um, when Conquer released. So that makes us concerned that it's more widespread than actually um, we originally thought. So bring those, you know, bring that to us um, so we, we know about it, please. Yep, good deal. And yep. the next topic is the uh, the coolest prize that's ever come up in the treasure trove. Oh yeah, so so this week uh, I I know we were te- kind of teasing about it um, for those who were sharp eyed on the forums, uh, but this week is checkered paint, um, and it is pretty awesome. I you know from so me looking at feedback, I I think this is the best treasure trove item that we've had to date. Uh, that's what I, I said. Agree with that, yeah. Um, but I think that's been echoed across, you know, the community. Um, and yeah. I personally agree. I think there's a lot of use that comes out of that. It's a great, like, interior paint. Um, you know, especially with uh, scaling and train tinting, you can do a lot with it. You can make it the same color, so it just looks like a nice tiled set. Um, you know, one thing about it is it doesn't change whether you put it on the side or, or, or it's on the bottom or the top. You know, all those things stay, so you can put it kind of where you want it to go. Uh, it's the, it's a really cool um, treasure trove item, and what's cool, right, is it's off, obviously kind of a companion treasure trove um, item to the leaderboards pack that went last week. So we're kind of looking at that going forward uh, about you know having a related treasure trove item that kind of celebrates the pack that recently came out. Not, it's not going to always be the case, but it's just something we're thinking about moving forward. So yeah, it's cool that the, the like the wooden sheep and uh, the checkered board are like companion pieces to the pack because it feels like it's something that's usable for everybody but if you already have the pack then it will be especially useful yeah exactly as long as you guys aren't taking stuff out of a content pack to say okay well we're removing it from the pack and we're making it a treasure trove item i 100 percent agree with that like i it shouldn't be and going forward like it's not like about Oh, this is something like in the pack, but don't we shouldn't we remove it so we can add it to the treasure trove? Like that's it's something that we're looking at it as this is something that isn't, you know, from the pack or you know, wasn't ever gonna be in the pack, but you know, how can we augment that to you know, even, you know, celebrate that pack and a- add something more that, you know, creators would hope for. So yeah, there wasn't originally a plan to do a uh, checkerboard paint in, in leaderboards, but uh it was actually you know, we were thinking about treasure trove items, and there was this idea of companion pieces. And me and Brian were both, well, you know, a, a checkerboard, you know, paint would be a great, you know, a great piece. It's something that the communities um, kind of ask for. It it makes sense for a lot of t- different types of, you know, there's a racing genre, arcade genre, a lot of things that use a checkerboard. And on top of it, with scaling and terrain tinting, it can be used for a lot of different, you know, different ways and different patterns. So, I mean, we we kind of pitched that idea actually. Oh, cool. So you're actually being useful. <laughs> I guess, yeah. At least that's my, maybe maybe somebody will come in and be like, no, this has been thought of a long time ago, but that's I, I remember pitching it and thinking, like, oh, this would be a great idea. So, but. in general, we don't, like, uh, have enough, I don't know, I guess, specialty paints. So it'd be kind of cool if, uh, like, once a month a treasure trove could uh, expand the number of uh, paints in general, not even if it's related to a content pack specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because and I know what you're saying. There's a lot of opportunity with the treasure trove because it doesn't have to be tied to like a a theme, right, or set pack. So like kind of those one-off ideas and unique things can actually fit in the treasure trove. They don't have to be tied to a pack. Um, It'd be cool if we so had like a high-tech like, paint that would go with the uh, like uh, the the sci-fi packs, for example. Yeah. Because right now, if you want to have a floor in sci-fi, you kind of have to use one of the platforms. But they're a little mm-hmm. thick, so you might want to just use terrain or something like that instead. It'd be nice if there was uh, some kind of paint that would go with that. Yeah, like a metallic, you know, similar pattern to the sci-fi stuff going on. Sure, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I get what you're saying. Uh, yeah, no, um, that no, that's a great idea. We'll have to, you know, take that back and talk to the team about, you know, what the bandwidth is for it. Um, obviously, like... Uh, you know, they just take different times of working on it. Um, I know that they don't want to like like moving on out. You're not only going to see terrain paint, um, you know, be the thing that comes out with like with a pack or be a unique item. Like like you saw with the wooden sheep, that was a prop. Um, so you know, definitely like looking forward, there's going to be other props that are in the treasure trove um, that we're looking at. So 
so yeah but I, I like your idea with you know the idea of like terrain paints and you know especially hitting on a lot of those community requests of things that are that don't really fit anywhere but you know would be really helpful to the community kind of similar to the checkerboard paint um right again, exactly yeah mm-hmm. and more skyboxes if it isn't something that's going to fit into a pack or heck even if the pack is far away because we kind of like skyboxes they change up the world really quickly yeah they do i th- I, I do think, um, uh, this is just my understanding, is that the skyboxes definitely take, they're, they're, they're quite complicated, um, just because of the way our mapping does and the wrapping and everything like that. It's, and I think it's definitely easier to put out a texture paint than it is a skybox. But those, are, yeah, that's a good example, too, of something that would fit in the treasure trove. Okay. Really can do, think of anything, but... Um, it's like I, also along I with haven't the, seen anybody talk about skyboxes uh, to go into the treasure trove yet. It's also like the hierarchy of how much complexity goes into making props, right? Yeah, there's yeah, there's like a hierarchy of like of our different assets of like, and this might not be exact, but it's like cards. Then, you know, well at the bottom it's like icons. Then you know, so icons and UI stuff. Then like cards. Then it would be. You know, very basic props that don't have anything. That'd be props with like power on, power off states, and then it would be, um, you know, move up the. Ch- you know, then there's, I'm, you know, in that in that there's textures and skyboxes and all that. And I I don't know that you know, and it changes by each one. But uh, there is like a hierarchy of when you think about the work. I mean, at the top is characters. Because they have so many animations in there. Yeah, yeah. It's the animations is what you know, and the rigs and stuff like that. So. Characters are always like the the highest, uh, usually most effort and most resources spent on. So we had a, a question that was parlayed to us by Amnesia from Chargen. Um, they wanted to know if uh, you guys rehearse your streams ahead of time when you're coding stuff, so that you know exactly what you're doing when you're doing tutorial streams or whatever. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, usually, well, so usually yes, but they're not. When I say no, it's more like we have the idea, but it's not as thoroughly scripted as probably we'd like or as the community would like. So uh, a good example, so this this last, this Tuesday was the, so you, like the super awesome combat design stream we just had with Steve-O. So Steve-O is our uh, combat designer and he does like a lot of the enemies that we've all seen in Champions Quest and you know from the assembly assembly gallery like Necromancer and all those and he kind of con- concentrates on the villains and he offered a ton of insight like into the way that Team Dakota thinks about the champion or you know thinks about enemies and their behaviors and you know and then he even went further about like the philosophy of why there needs to be and en- enemies and this combat um, and it was just an awesome stream definitely recommend checking it out um, but he was like super prepared he had like script and documentation and he had like a test level that he, we had up on stream um, we're actually gonna get kind of that stuff organized and hopefully share the level and get that documentation up somewhere whether that's a blog post or a form thread or what have you probably both um, but yeah so like he was really prepared so like for other and then like another really good example of a super prepared stream was multi-brain which they had you know it was something that was started even before I started on the team like Zach and Brian were wanting to do a multi multi-brain tor- tutorial forever and I mean Zach had a like 11 or 12 page you know walk through tutorial um, which we ended up like cutting pretty down for the stream and like focus on the key things that we wanted to um, show um, your phone's ringing. <laughs> um, give me a good second to take a sip. So, so yeah, so there's like those streams, and then there's like others that like, I would say, like the how to build a boss fight, um, like education stream that we did. We kept that, um, we, we knew what going in, what we wanted to do, but we didn't like have specific code lines, you know, scripted out that we knew exactly where it was going to go. We kind of just thought about it and, you know, went in on it and kind of was able to rift on it. And it's good to go in sometimes and have that because you can have flexibility on the direction that you go. And, you know, a lot of times good ideas come to you during it and, it'll, you know, giving that allows you to make those decisions versus like staying on this like hard script and then usually if you have the script, you like aren't going to finish in your hour because you 
overestimated or what have you. But, yep. So yep. yeah, that that's kind of the answer. So sometimes yes, um, sometimes no. Uh, but usually you have a good idea of what we want to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, and let us know if you if you think like they should always be scripted and like very tight and there's no want you know wandering around. Like let us know. I mean, like it's it's always what you guys want. So well, personally, I think that it's a good idea to have uh, the the stuff work fine the first time because if you are doing debugging of your own level for thirty minutes, we do that ourselves and we learn just as little. So, yeah, I know yeah. Th- there'll there'll be times like on stream right where like a mistake can happen, but that can that can actually happen like if we're going off script or going on a, off a, like on a script or whatever, because it's like something could just get input wrong or and then we still have to figure it out. But you forgot the damn global tile. Yeah, that hap- Oh my gosh, I that I that's seriously my number one mistake that I make <laughs> is forgetting the global tile. I'm always like, why isn't this going? Everything's correct, and it's oh I forgot a global tile. Um, but yeah, no, I I get where it's the streams aren't great if it's thirty minutes of us, you know, trying to figure out what the problem is. Ho- hopefully, not too many streams have ended up like that. <laughs> it's hopefully like five minute side tracks. And what we're doing now, we're with um, not necessarily all the education streams, but look going forward with all our videos, they're getting edited before they go to YouTube, so they're cut down and they're nice and succinct. So. You know, anybody who doesn't want to spend an hour watching, you know, can spend like, you know, whatever the video gets cut cut down to. So it's 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 better consumption, and it's more tight and it makes more sense. So uh, Paper Pancake has a question in regards yeah. to uh, community competitions. Um, how long after the competition ends do you guys usually hand out the rewards and the badges? Um, we really, I mean, at, when it ends and winners are, like, decided, we, at that point, like, right, you know, at that point is when rewards and badges should go out. So, and if we're, if we're late on any of that, um, give us a ping, send us a PM. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll miss that, that deadline occurred, um, and those rewards need to go out. So, yeah, general reminder is fine. Um, what, do you have other things to do or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, we, we we really don't. We're just terrible. So yeah, no. Feel free to ping us if you know if if it's your competition or if it's not. If it's just one you participated in, that's totally fine to send us a PM and just be like, hey, you know, I didn't get my badge and I participated in this. That's that's totally okay. Speaking of competitions, um, the mini gem now has a deadline because you guys released the release date for the dungeon that's descent. Right. And the mini jam for dungeon. So when is the release date for uh, Dungeons? Yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, because um, we haven't like put it really in too too many places in writing yet, unless you've been, you know, very much in the, on the forums, and I don't think we've even put it on Twitter yet. But uh, the next pack coming to Project Spark is Dungeon Descent, and it is coming June 11th. So not not this Thursday, but next Thursday. So as a result of that, um, I wanted to give it roughly one week after that to finish your uh, mini jam entry, which basically is build a game using the dungeon pack. So you can even start your coding now. You start the mechanics and stuff like that. So if you want to take Steve O's advice and make enemies right now, that's good too. But the caveat is don't make a 3D action adventure game and do not use melee combat because it's not great. Unless you're doing like a, a turn-based combat or something. Yeah. Well, well, and it's funny. So, uh, with you know, like Stevo's stream, right? Like in his enemies, like obviously, he's thinking about like the default spark when he's building those things. So they're like really focused on like third person action adventure combat. Um, but his stuff still extremely, extremely applies to like every genre you could think of. Like the way he thought about how the enemy interacts with the player how it has these different phases as it moves through. All of those things still apply in your game, even if you take out the third-person combat. So if you're doing a mini-jam entry for dungeon and want all these different enemies, you can still really think about Stevo's, um, you know, his his thoughts and his procedure for, you know, process for doing enemies. Um, even though uh, Paradox Moose here is being hard nosed about not having it be melee combat, combat, third person adventure focused. 
just because the the combat mechanic, mechanic, the the animations they aren't re- responsive they are like lengthy and all sorts of bad well, stuff. How do you so like so? I I don't think this reveals too much, but uh, so as as soon as I've been like seeing now dungeon in action, um, which you guys get to see dungeon in action. So here's my pitch real quick. Uh, you'll want to tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, for uh, on our Twitch channel for uh, an awesome hour of looking at the dungeon pack. Uh, so you you know it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna dive deep into it, take a look at the content, um, some really exciting stuff to show. Um, same that Brian says like this is. I like think this pack once we put it out there is just gonna be one of our top packs for forever. Kind of like how people think of like Keys of the Castle as like one of the must have packs. It was, and then we saw how silly it was. <laughs> well, there's, it's a, it's the toddler there's, castle I pack. I still think I still think um, there's a lot of people who like when people you know come into Project Spark they always recommend Keys of the Castle like first pack to get. Um, I think this is a good chance of like replacing that. Like I think first pack at people are going to say to buy is like Dungeon Descent. Okay. Yeah, I'll buy that, actually. Just because it, it, just from the vine that you showed, it's all, like the best crops from Alpha that we haven't seen since Alpha. And then you guys refined them and expanded them. Yep. That is that is exactly right. Oh, but the uh, deadline for the mini jam is uh, sen- Sunday the 21st at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time. So that's roughly ten days after the uh, pack released. Mm-hmm. Oh man, we're all over. We like interrupt each other and like so. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get to your deadline, and then I wanted to talk about the dungeon stuff and your combat, and then I was like, oh, I need to talk about the Twitch stream. So eh. a point I was going into was with the with what I've seen of dungeon is like the game that I really want to create with the dungeon packs is. Um, like an isometric, like adventure, adventure type style, like um, the the one that I think of, like, and I would just want to like build exactly is like Baldur's Gate, actually, like a you know top down. Sure. Um, it's basically Pillars like, of Eternity, basically, basically. Yeah, I've never I never played Pillars of Eternity, um, and I've never actually played the older Baldur's Gates. Well, I like played- they're made by the same team, actually. It's just that they couldn't use Baldur's Gate anymore because they weren't worth it, the the company anymore. They didn't have the IP. Oh, I should look at that game then. Yeah. Is that so? That's like newer. So like the Boulder's Gate that I always played and just loved, which I guess some people thought was like blasphemy compared to the older ones. But I really like Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance. I don't. I'm not familiar with that Dark Alliance. That, that was that was on console. So like growing up, I was like too young to do the, you know, the PC ones back in the day. Like that just wasn't the age range. Like I, I fell into. But you know, I I on the GameCube actually I played. Uh, uh, you know, Boulder's Gate, uh, Dark Alliance, and like fell in love with it. Just love that game so much, and like that's the game I want to build with like the dungeon set. <laughs> and I've seen some people talk- talking about wanting to make either random dungeon generators or wanting to make uh, the the Eye of the Beholder type games where you you know you're moving through hallways and you're turning left or right, but it's always or I think it was Bard's Tale also did that. Um, where it's a dungeon crawler, but in first-person perspective, and you have... Yeah, well, whose game is, uh... What's that? Dungeon Quest, right? Is that... Isn't that a community game that's very similar to that, with the random encounters, like, as you take steps? And yeah, it had, like, like the blobs in there. Continue? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it had, like... Well, I had these bat thing... Or I had, like, this big bat at the end that it just made me think of Zubat. <laughs> well, every time I played that game, I got a bad roll for what enemy I was going to fight, and I ended up being, like, five levels higher than my party, and I died, so... Oh. Well, you so like um, when I played through that game, I didn't get all the way through it, but like you, it kind of had this. It had the Pokemon style of like you need to grind the random encounters first before you like try to beat the boss. So like you have to like keep in this area, you know, finding level two people until you graduate to the next room and fight the level five guy. Which is fine so, as long as yeah, you know you have to do sense. it. You just it, it's an interesting like the one thing is like yeah. Um, for Project Spark, uh, you know, and, and players' attention spans, usually getting them to to grind those levels out, you're gonna you're gonna lose people between that point of you know point in time. But right, I mean, there's since Project Spark is free, there's absolutely no investment that for you to keep playing if you find any reason to leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for for some people, that's that moment for them to leave if they feel that way. So 
just depends. I mean, the co- that's the thing. Like, always got to remember that in your creations. Like, it's the even even more so than like the app store on you know like Android or Windows Phone or iPhone or what have you. Like, you know, there's so many games there, right? And they're like always free to play stuff, and it's really easy for people to like uninstall and you know play for like ten minutes. And be like, oh, forget that. It's like even easier for people to do that in Project Spark because they don't even have to install or do anything. It's just like jump to the next game, jump to the next game. Um, you know, so attention spans are like even shorter on uh, on Project Spark than they are like on YouTube, probably. Uh, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, probably about a on par. Yeah, I mean, probably the same, I guess. I mean, but it doesn't cost anything, right? They're not like you have to make them like invested in your game. So I think like people, so. That's why I think uh, people who like are really set on like making their games really hard in Project Spark, they I, lose I, them. I don't feel like that's a good strategy because you need to have you need to have this like kind. Think about kind of like how it's a difficult to curve. Yeah, and think about like so like Project Spark, right? So we can kind of go meta with this. So when new players come in and they like play through the tour, like the like they're gonna come out of the tour like at a level ten. And they're gonna have like tons of credits. They're gonna be able to go buy a pack or two, like with the credits they've earned, like right off the bat, just from going through the tour. Um, and the whole point there is like, right, we're this free game, um, but coming out like they're already invested. Like, oh, I'm already at level ten, and I got some, you know, I can already go and get some content like under my belt. Um, and it kind of, you know, gives this like progression feeling, like in, in you know, in, in achievement, a sense, like sense of achievement. So having that like in your game too. Where you know there's this this the curve of like getting the you know the player invested where all of a sudden it's like man I can't like quit this like a good example of a game that did this really well was that Save the Animals that collectathon game. Um, don't know if you had a chance to play that Paradox Moose or not. It doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, so that was by Nano Puff and we had it on the featured feed. It's so fun and it was like just crazy like the amount of stuff you needed to collect. But the whole point is like. You you know you get through it and like as soon as you're like oh you know I'm you know I'm thinking about you know finishing it up you're like oh but I'm you know I only have five coins to collect in this category right and you're like I already got five I can just find these five and then all of a sudden it's 45 minutes later because you wanted to collect every single thing in the game and you know but you had that like investment on your you know score or whatever which that game needs to have a leaderboard so nano puff if you're listening you need to go and add a leaderboard to the fastest time to collect stuff because that is a perfect leaderboard game but, but that's as far as like difficulty goes i think that yeah. having a lead in to the game so people will learn how to play it before it gets difficult is the key yeah a, t- a tutorial um Thing is super helpful. So my my favorite tutorial. There's like, actually, it's really funny. So I have like two really good examples of tutorials for you know any creators listening to go check out. So there's one that's really more structured um, and is a little bit more intense, but it's like a beautiful experience. And that was Mr. X Bob's tutorial for his Mighty Pooh battle. Um, I mean, he went through and did this awesome you know recreation of the Conquer fight with Mighty Pooh. But then he added this like really guided and really well done tutorial, um, you know, showing off all these move sets of Conquer, and he even tailored it so like he had an example of um, you know he he had this point where you threw dynamite like at the crows, which simulated throwing the toilet paper for the Great Mighty Pooh. He like had all you know it was like a lot of thought there. The way he did it was like super smart. Right, you have to make sure the tutorial isn't boring to the player that they yeah, just skip it, it. That was the thing; it like wasn't boring at all. It was like really fun. Um, so, high, I mean, that was like one of the best. And then you're gonna hate me for this, but like another Swordman. Yeah, I'm gonna say Swordman. Yeah, like this. All right, that's is, all the time we have for today's Sparkcast. <laughs> it's brilliant, though. What that guy did is brilliant. Um, and and and. And I'll, okay, I can say another game that did something very similar to that. So, so Sorban did it, and another game that did it really well was, was Gradius uh, Fox. Dying... Huh? It was Gradius Fox my game? Oh yeah, you could say that. Um, or uh, Dying Light is like the other one I was thinking of, thinking of, where it just it basically says do this, and then you like use the controller to do it. Um, so like those prompts too, so you can actually like get that feedback. And that one's like the quick in and out like method, right? Like. There's, you know, you're through the tutorial in like 20 seconds, which probably appeals to the attention span of like Project Spark players. 
Um, but yeah, so either like those two methods are probably like the golden way of going about it. Um, I would definitely look at those different creations we've mentioned if you're think, you know, thinking about that in your your own creations. Though you can also think of um, uh, Portal because Portal is like ninety percent tutorial. Yeah, no, that's true. So like the, ga- the whole every single level that you progress through, to, you know, in Portal, you learn something new, a new mechanic. Yeah, and makes you have to like think outside the box. Um, so yeah, like Portal is a very good example. And then the fun part is right and portal is like when you think you're when you're finally actually done with that there's like a whole second part that you didn't even realize is going to be in the game so yeah and uh what was it um god of war had an interesting tutorial where you actually felt good at the end of it when you you killed a hydra right i never played it but oh but yeah you you impaled the hydra's head on uh the post of a broken ship so yeah. That's a nice way to end a tutorial, I think. That's pretty cool. Um, question in chat about the non-DLC tag. So, yes, yeah, so so this is a fun thing. So, it, it correct what Moose said is it's called Woodland Woodlands Village, or Woodland Village, currently. So that actually will show you all this, the non-DLC content. Um, obviously, that name isn't the best, and we all didn't know that. Me and Brian actually uh, learned that um, too when we investigated it. So, but it also includes down. things like primitives, as well yeah. as the uh, woodlands props or the village props. Yeah, it, it is. It is all the all the core content that's free for everybody is given like the woodlands village tag. Um, so moving forward, uh, we're looking at renaming it. Um, it's not going to be non-DLC though that won't be the name of it um, we're looking at probably like core content or something to that effect um, but well, we I mean, you, make you guys easy. have used uh, the term base download before for the base game when you just download the game that's the stuff you get so I think base content makes the most sense yeah that's that's a good alternative too um, yep so we're, we're looking at that but yeah we want to surface that better and make it easier for people to find and I have it written down here that you have a surprise announcement on Friday to watch for. Yeah, so uh, um, for that, all that means is exactly what you just said. So uh, it's a couple of things. So so let's see. So today's Wednesday. So Thursday, um, I already told you about the stream. Uh, so pay, you know, look for that. You're going to definitely want to come in for the dungeon. Um, on Friday, um, our Play This Creation stream you're definitely going to want to tune in for that because we actually have a, a, a guest coming on. Um, so that's going to be really cool. Um, guest from where? I can't tell you that. So you'll just have to tune in to see. And we okay. might, I don't know if we're talking about it tomorrow or not, actually. Um, we might we might let it slip who, who's coming on Friday um, tomorrow, but we'll see. Or right now. Nope, not right now. Or right now. <laughs> not this instant, but this instant. Sure. Uh, right. <laughs> um, so, so those are two things to look for, and then the the third thing is we're gonna have a there's gonna be an announcement on Friday. Uh, so yeah, so just pay attention to that. Is the surprise re- announcement related to E3 in any way? It is not. Do you guys have any announcements related to E3? Uh, I so um, I mean, so just to to be honest, we're we're not gonna be at E3. So I'll just. Um, say that. So usually, it's like the way to think about that. Um, it, that's definitely like not a bad thing or anything. Obviously, you guys know like we have tons of stuff like in the works for Project Spark. Um, but you, so it's it's a really unique thing for for games to even come to two uh, E3s in a row, which Project Spark did. We were at 2013 E3 and 2014 E3. Um, so having a third time would have just been kind of crazy. Um, and uh, unprecedented. Uh, never. That's never happened before for the same game to come three times to E3. Um, so, do you guys have anything like cool coming down the line that would like warrant you guys being at a future E3? Oh yeah, I think I think so. Really? Well, like I mean, as far you mean like this E3? I mean, we're we're no. always working on cool stuff, and like, yeah, like there's. Uh, I mean, there's definitely cool stuff that we could have, we could like drum up and like, you know, do a E3 thing. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, but you could actually be at a future E3, like if you have like 
cool stuff planned. I mean, I, I can't speak to, like, that far out in the future, right? Like, a year from now at, you know, June 2016, like, you know, what's happening then at, for, for E3 and, you know, and all the things for Project Spark, but... I don't, I mean, the train, like, I mean, they, we've said this ever since the beginning, even when I was part of the community, this is what I was hearing, right, and it's true, like, there's, there's not, um, you know, Project Spark is this, this new concept about, you know, this game that's ever expanding and building on the tool set, um, and that's, like, the plan, like, there, there isn't, you know, there is no, like, end date calendar where they don't want to, um, you know, what there isn't stuff going on, so, you know, at, if we're gonna be at E3 2016, I have uh, I have no idea. Um, but, but would it be something? Do you have any stuff stuff in the plans that would be my head so big? Plausible. So big Depending that you would weren't on. being in the E3 again. Yeah, there's no, I don't I don't see why there wouldn't be. Oh, that's interesting. I wasn't sure if you guys had like major major plans or if it was just more of coasting, adding little things as we go. No, I I mean I don't. I definitely would say that there is not coasting. Okay. Well, I guess we'll have to stay t- tuned to Friday and see if there's a big announcement related to something big coming. Well, so um, it's not um, – I should say – so to tone it, I guess, down a little bit. It's not fe- – it's, like, not feature-related, um, the surprise announcement, like, on Friday. Um, but y- you'll, you guys will see. It's going to be really cool. Okay. Well, I guess we'll stay tuned anyway. Because yeah. what else do we have to do with a Friday night? <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, it's Friday morning, right? Yeah. Wait, will we announce during the stream or later in the day? It, it'll probably be later. I think after we don't want to. We want to first have like our our stream, um, you know, th- in the in the morning. I mean, I guess it could go earlier. I guess I shouldn't commit to saying it'll be the afternoon, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's afternoon on Friday for uh, for us, so Pacific time. Um, so project has a question uh is there like yeah. a long-term plan for product spark like a contract to keep you guys online for five ten years or is it just going by ear so there there isn't like that either there's not like some there's not like we know for sure there's you know whatever you know thing you know we're guaranteed for five years or whatever like that's that's also not like a thing um i mean it's a lot playing by ear um but there's no plans know. to close down there's no yeah there's no there's no plans to like close down like like so i mean this is one of those things that's different right we're like um i mean we're part of like microsoft obviously right so um you know and obviously microsoft's is this big company um that has like you know xboxes underneath it um and we're kind of we're considered microsoft game studios so we're you know have these ties to xbox and ties to like the windows platform like obviously we're on xbox we're on windows um but yeah, so like I mean, with that, like there's there's a lot of um, you know people inside Microsoft who are you know super excited about all the things that Project Spark does, um, and you know are super supportive and you know definitely don't want to don't want to see it stop anytime soon. So I mean, lot, it seems a like a a service, and the way that content packs are set uh, set up, the longer you guys are um, open, the more you guys are gonna make money off of the things that you guys have already produced. So that's like a, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's like royalties almost, right? So you're getting paid after for something that you produced a long time yes, ago. Yes, or syndication. Yeah, that's a, that's a really fancy word I don't know, but yeah, guess that. Sure. Um, <laughs> there was one other topic I wanted to bring up that I didn't write down, and I it just slipped my mind. Let's see, can I find it real quick? Yeah. Oh, concept art. To- I'm looking. You guys are so funny in chat. That is all. They're all like teasing. We're shutting down Monday. Blah blah blah. You guys are ridiculous. That's the announcement <laughs> for Friday, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. You guys are so funny. Um, so you did a concept art dump. Yeah. A few days ago. I did do a. Con- yeah, you're trying to get me back on track. Yes, I, I am. Was trying to like go through. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, I want to talk about the concept art. So yeah, so I did it. It was a small dump. It, like I, I wanted it to be bigger, uh, but we're working on it. So for those who don't know, we have this. Uh, we actually had a, a Pinterest account um, set up but, about a year uh, ago. It, yeah, it was like a year ago, and I don't think it was ever touched after that point. Um, but anyway, we're we're planning on having that 
be the go-to place for Project Spark images. So as, as things come out and we put them out, we're going to add, add them to Pinterest too. And it's going to be um, kind of my little pet project to just go in and keep uh, going through backlog of stuff and making sure we have things on there. So, you know, anything that um, you've noticed that, you know, we've put out there that you haven't been able to locate again or, you know, want a, you know, nicer image or file quality or whatever, let us know and we can put that on, on that board for you guys. Uh, it's you know it's it's gonna be a really cool place for people to get kind of get inspired. I mean our concept art is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, without a doubt, like I can't. I don't think anybody could say otherwise. So you know, and I think it's inspiring. So having having a place to go for you know for people to look at that and like use those as like wallpapers on their computers or phones or what have you. Uh, you know, I I wanted that out there. I know it's taken a while. It takes a long time for some approval and just getting. I had to sort through tons of images because um, I wanted to start off first with like kind of the er the earlier uh, concept stuff out um, it's gonna be easier to find it's gonna be easier to get approval on things that are um, you know like in game and things that have already launched uh, like so a lot of the stuff that I put on there like so there's these really cool concept drawings that are black and white of the creation well mm -hmm. um, you know and obviously those are like things that are like pretty abstract and never you know made it in game or or at least that version of it. So, but like, I just saw those, and I my mind was like, "Whoa, these are so cool looking! Like, I want that as my like back desktop background screen." It made me uh, wish I was better at drawing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so you know, seeing that kind of stuff, uh, I really, I, you know, I just really wanted to get it out there. So I'll be working on um, getting more and more stuff up over time. I'm hope I'm hoping to do like add to it like you know ten or fifteen images like once a week. Um, of a back of the backlog and then do you know whatever new stuff is happening get that there too so we'll we'll work on that um you know as more images and stuff we'll have to probably reorganize how things are or uh, are on there but yeah hopefully you guys are really um into it and really like them you know let us know what you want to see on there as far as old stuff that we've shared out before we'll we'll get any in any requests i actually have a thread um that's sticky now so just message on there if you remember something that's not there now. Well, Nia just brought up uh, Champions. She'd like to see more kinds of art for those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we do have a bunch of Champion stuff. Uh, a lot of, like, so the one thing, those are usually, they've been shared for some of the Champions is, like, they call them, like, the turnarounds. So those are, like, where it shows the back, the front, the side, and it goes through them. And there's also the Champion progression images that mm -hmm. show, like, them with novice and then as they get the armor and it adds on to it so yeah so those things should be added on there as well do you guys uh, have like alternate versions of the champions that didn't get produced um well so yeah i mean there there's there's always yeah i, I mean i i can think of like one right now that's like stark difference so i mean do you remember uh the i i think they even talked about this so that's why i'm okay with mentioning this um the, the wizard Seth, the wizard so they talked about the story of the wizard and the development of it and how it started off and it's like it changed dramatically through its development. Yeah, I actually saw the original concept art while I was there last year. Oh, okay, yeah. So so with the wizard, um, you know, they originally started off as like an elderly wizard and um, I don't even know if it was human or not to start. Uh, but it like transformed I can't over say. time. And, yeah, and eventually ended up... Um, uh, you know, being like the, they decided to go with like this like rambunctious like teenager who now we know today as Seth. Um, but yeah, so you know, he definitely had, he probably went through the most iterations I think of the champions. Um, so he definitely has a bunch of concept art that's uh, that's not his version. Those would be, those would be harder to share with you guys though, um, especially if any of those things that never made it to production end up wanting to like come back for a release some of that stuff they they repurpose and reuse so that's why it's not always um easy to get like stuff that you know out there um so i don't know about alternative versions of like him or any of the other champions but definitely of the stuff that got released and we've shared in the past that would be no problem getting up there so i mean it's everything's very case by case um how well i mean we can understand that uh the stuff that was, stuff that was i'm seeing a little bit of echo i mean by me. By me. Oh, okay. I don't hear it. Yeah, well, that's because I'm hearing myself. Hear myself. Anyway. <laughs> this is a good way to uh, ruin your hearing. All right. Anyway, so um, we understand that 
the the stuff that hasn't been yet been released if we see it in the concept art it's not going to be an indication that's coming soon or that's currently in production or that we're going to get exactly that so it's okay for us to see novel things that we haven't seen yet before yeah it yeah, some some of the stuff that you it's gonna be okay to have you guys see stuff that you haven't seen before, um, as pretty much as long as it's something that they they can pretty much say that like this won't end up being something we want to share and be heavy you, you know later and like because you guys like surprising us for some reason we oh everybody so that's like a that's a known thing in like any kind of entertainment brand or like release thing like I mean. <laughs> To, I hate. I actually really don't like this word or this like term, right? But it's like hype, right? So, you you stay tight lipped about stuff, and then when you or when you finally like have your ducks in a row and you're ready to talk about it, you talk about it, you know. So like you know, so the talk of the of today, right, is obviously Dungeon Descent. Uh, yeah, I'm kidding, but like so for any you know hardcore gamers like out there, like you know probably the biggest like talk about today is like the Fallout Four announcement slash trailer. Um, which is like huge, right? It's like a it's a series that only comes out like every five years. Um, you know, it's an, like usually epic RPGs, sci-fi, like tons of fans. Um, but you know, like they're pretty tight-lipped about it, and they like build. There's like anticipation for it, and when they when they finally talk, you know, talk, uh, you know, show it off, talk about it, they can actually do justice and show and talk about it. It's not like super early, um, and and we kind of just have that mentality. Um, I don't. I mean. I, this is, I mean, my just personal opinion. Like, I like, I like when things are like announced and they're closer to when they actually come to be reality. I think when stuff gets announced too early, it's like easy to kind of like, oh well, that's just coming sometime, and you know, all of a sudden it's like two years later and we're still talking about it and it's still not out yet. Oh, you mean like Project Spark? <laughs> no, Project Spark came out what? So it was announced 2013. So it was about a year and two months. And then the beta, if you want to technically consider the beta, made it faster. Yeah, uh, well, I guess that's a good point. The beta was pretty much the entire game, just ahead of the beta label. Yeah, hey, I mean, the beta was super important um, as far as getting all that, like, feedback. This Project Spark is, like, this unique experiment, right? So, I, in the end, like, I think they were smart. I mean, I can say this, because especially I can talk from, like, the point of view community, you know, as I was a consumer of the beta, um, I think it was like the right call to, you know, do that. Now, as far as like how long, I mean, they they did like a full beta that went right into launch and like just kept it going. Um, I don't know if I would have preferred like uh, a beta that would have been like open for a month and you know and then close, you know, and then it went back to being closed and then they hashed stuff out. But I don't know. It was it was really good. I, I'm glad that we got input in before launch. I think that made a huge difference. So a couple questions came in. Um, yeah. One was, do you guys wear pants around the office? Uh, yes, here. I also here. Oh, this yeah. is we. This is so inappropriate. We don't need you're this. Getting some, you're getting some modeling. You're only like three feet tall. You can't possibly no, get up to see, the. I have pants. Okay, this is the worst part of the Sparkcast ever. <laughs> um, moving along, uh, do you guys have like long-term plans for Spark or long-term goals that you're willing to like? announce and like, give us a roadmap for and do you have a time frame for when we can expect to hear that um so no, no, nothing to announce yet um it's something uh you know me and brian are uh or brian and i i should say grammatically correct uh you know are are talking about and um but yeah i mean there's there's definitely like longer term visions and and things that are getting worked on in spark uh obviously like as community managers it's our job to you know convey that information you know, accurately and as you know, and at the best time as possible. So we're we're working through that. Um, I mean, so so this is actually just. I mean, this is like something I've been talking about with Brian, um, and I'm totally cool with sharing it with you guys. Like, so so like with E3, like think about like this last year. So like when Project Spark came to E3 2014, um, you know, and it was getting ready. So like there's launch, right? And so they built all this anticipation, and like t you know, Project Spark talked about sci-fi so they announced like you know look we do have this other theme that's gonna be here and here's our galaxy series um and then they also talked about champions quest um isn't it kind of crazy like when you think about it, like we all knew and were engaging in project spark and then these are all things that we didn't even know were happening um 
Right. So there's like the whole idea of Champions Quest, which actually I think when they talked about Champions Quest was the first introduction of what champions were actually supposed to be. At first, we just thought they were just these characters using crossroads, um, which didn't have any like art leveling or different clothes or anything right. like that. Um, so I mean that was like a huge reveal, and then um, you know what that vision was for champions, and then there was another and multiplayer. That was the other big tenet. They had those three big cores right that they talked about, and then conquer. Uh, yeah, and then and conquer was like the surprise. Yeah, um, so so with uh, I mean with those I we'll we'll leave out conquer because uh, that's like a side thing. Um, but like those three things, right? Were like what they got had drumming for launch, and then between you know E three and launch, which was what four months. Like everybody was looking forward to that and wanting to know more information, and you know had this whole. Uh, had, had you gave you know stuff on the horizon for people to look forward to mm -hmm. you know I realize now um, you know that besides us talking about like the next content pack we, we have two uh, weeks next, of knowing what the next thing is yeah exactly you know the, you guys don't get to see that far into our, the horizon because we haven't made like longer term com, you know commitments and announcements to you guys um, and I mean and there's definitely reasons for that uh, you know as we're iterating and thinking about things here um, but that's something that me and Brian are really passionate about getting to you guys is we want to be able to, you know, give, a, 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 you know, longer sight lines to you guys so you can you can see what's on the horizon. Um, that's something we want to want to do. Uh, but we're working on it. So no, so no, like that, but just know that that's that's something that Brian and I are really passionate. And we know that the community wants that. Um, and I, we both think it's really important. So are you guys in the process of figuring out what it is you guys are going to do, or is it that you guys are, just aren't ready to give us timelines for when the stuff is going to be ready? I mean, it's, bo it's, it's both, right? So, like, there's, there's um, you know, yeah, figuring out, um, you know, what's on, on the plan. So are there some things the that are ready, like, you guys are already committed to doing, but there's, a, but there's more things that you're still planning if you want to prioritize or what their order is going to be? It, it's both. So there's there's the things that we know for sure that we've already like as a team have decided like where well, this is what we're gonna do and this is like already what people are working on, um, and those are like kind of the first things that would happen in this like you know order obviously, and then there's things that are further out from that which are still being investigated and talked about, um, you know, and there's you know there's there's everything in between. So there's there's things that are you know here which there's a actively getting worked on and there's like deciding if people should actively work on it but this is something we definitely want to do here's things that we're not sure if we want to do yet but we think it'd be cool and then like here, here's something that's something we want to do but so far out and we're not going to worry about it because we have these three other things that we want to do i mean there's a whole spectrum um along the path um so yeah those are like you mean those things are getting like filled in and i mean that that's something that like every studio probably consistently has all the time um, we're different because we're a service so they go that that planning phase or whatever probably as soon as they get their game out that's launched and they're looking at like sequel for this triple-a game and then they like go through well this is this is the feedback this is what we want to change this is for the next you know release or whatever so I mean you can imagine that probably happened with okay like since we've talked about it like fallout 4 like when they probably released fallout new vegas which was i think the last version um you know they probably had six months of feedback from that and then they took it to a planning phase and then they started development on fallout 4 or you know and it's been in development for three plus years or whatever it is um so i mean we're different in that we're like always evolving and always changing so like that that whole we always have ideas in these like that whole spectrum and they're always moving right and so like I mean you can think of like leaderboards right which has been released now and everything I mean it the same way it moved through that um, and things like for instance so like leaderboards right was one of these things that there was like a coming soon tab a while right so it was one of these things that originally was going to be hit on before other things got prioritized before it and jumped in the process. Um, and that's always changing, right? Depending on what you guys talk about, and you know, just tech tech needs about what we can and can't pull off. Um, there's a lot of stuff in motion all the time. So, do you guys like have a, a focus for the future? Like, um, it seemed like Spark is a, was uh, through release and maybe even up until like Conquer was 
arguably more focused on creating play experiences for the users, and the creators have been getting like little things like the artist pack or um, the massive world builder pack every once in a while. So, have you guys picked a direction, or are you gonna just gonna keep uh, trying to please both, but more so the players? Yeah, you're so funny. You're like, take it, take it. You're like, take it. <laughs> Maybe um, <laughs> you're like propping it up. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I can, I can say that like going forward. Um, I mean, we definitely want uh, like the next phase is. Uh, I mean, we've always thought about this for Spark. Um, is like you know we always want to inspire you guys, and then it's you know going. It's always about and then ta- you guys taking the mantle and going you know places with it that you know super surprise us. And we've like really seen that. So I mean yeah, I mean I'm ha- you know definitely get, you know happy to say that like we're as we're thinking about the future and stuff, we want to definitely be really like creator centric. Um, I mean, to put it pretty bluntly, like uh, we're really focused on the the create experience and letting you guys create better games that are really fun to play. Because like those play experiences in the UGC and stuff. I mean, that's that's what makes it really unique. And I mean, you guys make awesome stuff. Like, I mean, we can you know we can make um, you know Champions Quest, which is you know also I think the team did a good job on and is really fun. Um, you know, but like charging my laser. Pull, you know, does Invasion 2, which... Which was much better. <laughs> well, for fans of 2D shoot 'em up side-scrollers or whatever... Infinitely just, more fun, yes. Um, <laughs> but, but I mean, that's, I think that example, right, is really powerful. Um, and so being able to see, you know, having that focus on creators and, like, you know, giving more tools and more accessibility and making it easier and all those types of things is really important and is really where we kind of want to go with stuff. So, I mean, I'm happy to, I'm happy to say that. Like, that's, I think that going forward, like, I think definitely more creator-centric is a good way to think about it. Like, obviously, there's still going to be, like, content and, and whatever and everything else, but definitely think about, like, you know, just know that in the back of your head that that's what Team Dakota is looking at. We're, we're definitely focusing on, like, our awesome... Uh, community of creators. So, uh, we, so uh, we we look towards, we look towards, the, towards uh, the future, uh, roadmap, future that's roadmap that's coming. That's coming. We, can we can expect that it'll be mostly creator focused stuff, stuff like the stuff editors that I asked for or, or the or additional coding stuff like the arrays or uh, string parsing, things along those lines rather than oh, we have five episodes of Champions Quest that are coming this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm not committing to like anything or, you know, it's Exactly like, those. But, but I, <laughs> but um, I mean, we're we're definitely looking more at the, the creator stuff for sure. I mean, as as far as priorities, I mean, yeah. And there were a couple I, questions. That's like my safe answer without like saying any more. Um, but yeah, no, like our our priorities are on on the things that make it you know create you know giving new tools and improving the tools. Um, so we expect we a raise here. by uh, the end of summer. Expect a raise. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'm getting a raise now instead of getting fired? This is awesome. That's never happened before. A R R A Y S. I'm fired on Sparkast. <laughs> a raise, not O A raise. What? A oh. ray, not a raise. Oh, you're saying you're getting a raise. Ah, you tricked me. That yes. was such a mean thing to say. No, I was hoping to get a raise, like yeah. money. <laughs> no, no, no money. Just uh, a, a data structure. Oh, oh, oh. Nope, no, no raise. Like, you would increase my salary. <laughs> no, no, you still get nothing, and you like it. Um, so Windows 10 actually had a release date. So are you guys allowed to talk about it anymore? Well, at this point, uh, we're we're still not um, as far as Project Spark and its um, and its availability and all of that with uh, Windows 10. We are not ready to talk about it yet. Okay. Um, but you bring up a really good point. How a release release date has been announced. So for those who don't know, July 29th, I believe, is the date that uh, Windows has given. Um, so it should be really cool. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you bring up a good point that uh, we probably should be talking about that relatively soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, that's actually uh, that's a good question. Um, that's actually not something um, I actually have thought of too much about, so I need to talk to Brian. 
Yeah, because yeah, uh, uh, Windows, Windows 10 integration, integration with, with Xbox, Xbox One. One. The, the Echo. Echo. It's killing me. It's killing me. Oh, and uh, and, uh, Hero uh, asked one one more more thing. Uh, Uh, Man, this is hard to hear. hear Two-second delay. delay. Um, Um, Is there any plans to integrate integrate, uh, uh, user-created content into Spark? You... Are you... um, User-created assets. Oh, okay. From outside of Spark into Spark. Oh, and yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Um, no, nothing like nothing there to announce yet. Um, as far as like, you're you're thinking of like bringing you know stuff that people's either made like in Photoshop or, or Maya or whatever. Yeah, or, or whatever. Yeah, nope, not nothing to announce there. Um, yet. So, so yeah. Uh, I mean that that opens like a you know box of worms. Um, as you guys can imagine, like a lot of that stuff's been talked about since like. Project Spark was ever first announced, right. and it's, it's, it's obviously something creators have talked about. Uh, you know, can I bring this stuff in? Do I am I restricted only to the content Spark? Uh, and obviously, it raises like a lot of moderation concerns. Um, and not so only that, yeah, but it's, also it's, it's definitely yeah, it's it's definitely like a, a, a unique problem. Um, but yeah, we're not we're not ready or um, you know talking about anything like that. But also like the the integrating of models into Spark isn't as simple as you guys accepting, oh, we like this character model that someone made, because you still have to t- tie in all the animations, you still have to tie in all the code on the back end, and go through all these quality assurance checks to make sure that it'll actually function properly. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, you, I mean, you bring up a good point, right? Like, so, we, I mean, there's still, like, the accessibility that we always have wanted to maintain with Spark, um, you know, about how anybody can do it, and you don't have to be, like, an expert, so... I mean, if you just think about having that like process in there, there is there's a lot that would have to be thought about included to make that a, a good user experience, um, you know, for a Spark user. Uh, so like, how do you, you know, how does a Spark, uh, you know, how does a Spark player or creator, you know, go in and find, you know, assets that have been shared, or you can you only import them to like your own creations? Um, so yeah, I mean, you you bring up really good points, and yeah, and as far as exactly like it's complicated, like. Do these things are they only like static, you know, assets that's you know sit in game and do nothing, or you know, are they interactable? Can they have animations or not? Do they you know bring in their own animations? Do they have animations of the you know things that are in game already? Um, so yeah, I mean those are all those are all things um, that are important to consider when thinking about that kind of feature. All right, so the last question of the night because it surprisingly is ten after. Um, it goes fast. <laughs> uh, do you guys have any plans for the timeline for Conquer Episode 2? Oh, yeah, thanks for... I saw that in chat, and I want to hit on it. So, um, so with Conquer Episode 2, we, we don't have anything to announce at this time. No. I, I mean, that's... So, yeah, I, I can't uh, give a release date or, you know, anything, you know, to that effect. Um, I'm sure that you'd hope to hear. Uh, but, yeah, we're not uh, ready to talk about any you know anything relating to Conquer Episode 2 yet, so... Um, there's a lot of really cool uh, Conquer community creations that I definitely highly recommend checking out. There's definitely some creators too who are working on some really large Conquer projects, uh, who I definitely recommend following to and see where they're at in the process. Uh, I think I can at least think of like three or four really large Conquer games that people are working on. Um, you know, there's like a Pocket Tales remake. There's a uh, there's where Andrew's still always increasing, um, you know, building upon the the uh, Conqueror's like other bad day, um, I think is what it's called. I can't remember. Um, and you know, and there's uh, another one. Um, oh, what's the other one? The one made by the guy who made RT. Yeah, Spawn Nine's making one as well. Um, oh, I thought I said that one already, and I was thinking it if I didn't. Um, I was there's, paying attention, there's somebody so. else who's making like a similar so so where Andrews is about like what happens to conquer between Bad Fur Day and the like the game that had a script made and that was never released and then there's like somebody who wants to actually like make that game based off the script too. I saw something like that, but so yeah, there's like a bunch of um, you know in the works conquer projects, but yeah, as far as ours, as far as episode two, uh, nothing to announce on that front yet. 
Thanks for asking, though. Appreciate it. All right. So with that, we're going to end with some reminders. So the big things are tomorrow's stream, you're going to go over the dungeon pack. Yep. Dungeon don't hit this pack is gonna be I think the must have recommended probably pack ever it's gonna be your your um, you know your your for people who like modular things and people who like architecture things it's gonna be next uh, go to it's gonna be the go to and that is gonna be at 3 p.m. Pacific 6 6, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern on project underscore spark the twitch channel um, on Friday at was it gonna be like around eleven or noon Pacific? Yeah, it's a uh, it's eleven um, on Friday for the uh, Project Spark plays your creation stream with a guest oh, with and a surprise surprise guest. It's not Phil Spencer, um, mm-hmm. or is it? No. Okay, and then you guys are also later in the day on Friday going to have a sp- surprise announcement that doesn't have to do with a feature. You guys are not at E three for some reason. Um, because you guys don't have anything interesting to show, evidently. And that's so, not how it works. You know how many? So have you even? So I can, I guess, I can say this. I'm like, I can say whatever I want. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, like so, like Phil Spencer, you know, tweeted out about, um, you know, saying that you know they probably have just as like much content like to show off to at like Gamescom as they do as like E3 this year. Uh, or you know it was implied you know from a tweet he did but mm-hmm. like I mean I so I really so studios like don't talk I can share this because so, like studios in Microsoft like don't necessarily know what studios or other studios are doing so like I can't tell you what you know all these other developers that are Microsoft game studios are working on um, so that's why I'm like I feel free I can talk about it because I'm just guessing like everybody else um, but you know, like, they, they're, it's, it's jam-packed, it's like, this, this holiday season, um, I mean, just from what, like, is known about, like, the Microsoft lineup is, like, super epic, and there's, there's so much, uh, and it's so filled, like, I don't even know how they can get what they want to talk about, you know, at E3 in 90 minutes, like, I can't wait, I'm gonna be, I, I don't, I mean, it's a Monday morning, but I'm gonna be off the forums, and, sitting somewhere and watching E3. I don't know if they put it up on the big screen at the offices, but I hope they do because I want to watch some E3. <laughs> I was surprised you guys didn't uh, find that out in advance. Like, they don't at least give you a text version of, like, the lineup. Oh, no, no, no. It's super secret. Like, so, it, there'll be announcements that we don't know. Like, in that, and it's not just me. Like, I'm talking, like, you know, like, hi, hi, like, leadership. Leadership on Spark won't necessarily even know, like, what other, you know, studios are doing. Like, you know, like, I was talking, like, Raul doesn't know what, you know, certain studios are doing. Like, obviously, like, if, you know, if you have connection, you know, contacts in other studios and people talk or whatever, but, um, but yeah, it's not like, uh, it's not like we get, like, a press release that says, this is what we're going to talk about at E3. It doesn't go like that. Which is a, which is a good thing. Like, I, I, I think having, you know, letting the studios concentrate on what they do best and, you know, letting the Xbox leadership team, you know, organize that and, you know, think of it on a platform level is a really good way of doing it. Yeah. I don't know. It'll be a sense. surprise that way. Yeah. And you guys like surprises as we've gone over. It, surpri- surprises are, like, really important as far as just, like, you know, keeping, you know, keeping excitement and, like, I don't know. I mean, it's just, in- I mean, it's information and, I mean, that's what it really comes down to, right? Announcements and, like, information. Um, and you know things just have to as they move down the pipeline like they, they have to cook and bake in certain areas before they move on to the next and so just like as it, as it moves down the thing as things get ready like they get ready to start talking about more and more alright next up um, Monday the 8th has been cancelled due to a scheduling conflict and the mini jam for the dungeons is going to end on the 21st what what was mon what Monday the eighth was canceled? What is that? It was canceled due to a scheduling conflict. But what was happening that day? Just Monday itself. The day mm-hmm. Monday is now canceled. Yes. I don't understand it, but okay. <laughs> That's the joke. All right. Um. <laughs> all right. Thanks everybody for joining us on the Sparkcast. Thanks Thomas for being our guest. Thanks everybody in the community for uh, a- asking questions and. 
Not so much thanks to the people who are trolling. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't in chat to troll today, but I, I promise I'll 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 be there next week to troll. <laughs> oh yes, we hate you too. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks guys. See you next week.